Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at two 14 millimeter wide angle lenses. Here we have the Canon 14 millimeter L series Mark II lens, and this here is the Rokinon 2.8 uh, 14 millimeter lens. Both of them are actually aperture 2.8. However, the difference is mainly the fact that the Canon is a $2,000 lens, while the Rokinon in this case is about 400. Now, I say that because the Rokinon can actually be cheaper if you get the specific lens without the confirmation chip for it. In this case, it does have the confirmation chip, so I get to save things like aperture settings and confirmation for focus and so on and so forth. Anyway, with that in mind, with that huge price difference in mind, I thought it'd be interesting and important to compare the two lenses with one another, see how they perform in terms of things like, you know, chromatic aberration, distortion, uh, you know, just detail in general. So I'm going to take these two lenses through, you know, a variety of tests going from things like indoor, outdoor, and even night photography. So stick with me and let's see how they compare to each other. Alright, so to begin with, I have a photo of the living room. Uh, both lenses are at wide open and we have the Canon on the left and the Rokinon on the right side. So the first thing that comes to mind is this line here. The Rokinon tends to have this curvature going on here as it's stretching out the corners of the image. You can see a little bit more of this grill on the Rokinon because honestly, I think the Rokinon is a little wider than 14 millimeters or the Canon is a little more zoomed in than 14 millimeters. Can't tell the difference, but you do see a little bit more in the edges on the Rokinon. However, the second thing that comes to mind is detail. On the outs on the you sort of outer edges on this photo, notice how the Rokinon has a quite detailed trim here compared to the Canon. Even the crown molding seems to have a lot more contrast and detail than it does on the Canon lens. And the chromatic aberration. You can see it everywhere on the Canon lens while the Rokinon seems to barely have any of it. Another place I can show you is this pillow here. First of all, notice how it has more detail on the Rokinon, and second of all, notice the purple hues around the edges of the fluffy parts. Again, chromatic aberration showing up on the Canon lens at wide open. If we go to this part, we see that the Rokinon does tend to stretch a little more, but however, again, we're seeing this, in this case, green line of chromatic aberration going on on the Canon, while the Rokinon tends to be pretty clean. Otherwise, I did uh, focus on this little globe in the middle of the photo on both in both cases, and everything in the middle sort of this area seems to be exactly the same. One more uh, observation is that the Rokinon seems to be a little bit darker than the Canon lens, so the Canon lens seems to be letting in a little bit more light. So next we have a comparison with, again, wide open aperture. Except for this case, I have this sort of uh, fireplace going on here with the stone on the back. Immediately, you can tell that curvature I was talking about in the previous image on the Rokinon while the Canon is quite straight. In other words, the distortion seems to be a lot less on the Canon than it is on the Rokinon. Now, if we zoom in to compare the detail, uh, the first thing that I notice is uh, the Canon tends to have a little bit more of a purple, sort of purple hue, while the Rokinon is a little bit more maybe green, I would say. Otherwise, they're both quite similar. Another thing, though, the Rokinon does get more of uh, vignette on the corners. You can see the dark corner areas, while the uh, Canon is a lot brighter in the corners. And again, as I mentioned previously, the Rokinon tends to have a little bit more of a wide capture than the Canon. You can see the outline, the outside of that trim, the wood trim on the, you can start seeing base, basically the beginning of the wall, while on the Canon, it's, it cuts out here on the trim. Again, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration going on on contrast points between, you know, dark and the beginning of the white stone. You can see this purple-ish line while the Rokinon tends to not have that. So now looking at the two photos at aperture 3.2, we can see that the Canon is still doing better in terms of vignette than the Rokinon. The Rokinon is still quite dark in the edges. And just to check for things like detail and sharpness, I'm going to go out to the corners again and compare. I think that the Rokinon tends to save a little bit of more details on the outsides compared to the Canon. This is a lot more soft. There's a little bit of that purple aberration going on on the edge. And if we look at the 
top corner, you can kind of see the same thing. If you compare this area with this area here, this little chip around the stone is a lot more detailed on the Rokinon lens than it is on the Canon, surprisingly. All right, so here at Aperture 4.0, we're gonna do the same thing. Look in the corners first, see if there's any improvement on the Canon. There is improvement in terms of detail. However, I still believe that the Rokinon tends to have a tiny bit more sharpness and detail than the Canon lens. If we go up to the top corner, Definitely better on the Canon side. Before, as you remember, on a more open aperture, the Canon was a lot more blurred out in the corner. However, the Rokinon still has a little bit more contrast and detail going on. Finally, before we go on to the next test, I wanna show you guys the difference at aperture 7.1, which is as high as I'm gonna go in this test. The sharpness and detail on both lenses is very good. The Canon is finally really sharp on the outside of the frame. Uh, I would not be able to say that the Rokinon beats it at any level at this point because at such a narrow aperture, there's just, the, the detail is a quite high level. So not much of a difference there. You can read this quite clearly on both lenses. Go to the other corner here. We can see the detail in this line. It's quite well. The contrast is there. We can see the grain quite good in both of the lenses. So here we have an image of a building that's quite far away from the camera. And when it comes to things like distortion, you know, the farther you are away from your subject, the less apparent it becomes. Unless you're looking at tall structures that are vertical, for instance, this tree here. Yeah, you can tell that it's pretty slanted on the, you know, anything on the outside of the frame is quite slanted towards the inside. This becomes more and more apparent when you're shooting uh, cityscapes with really, really tall, high rising buildings. Otherwise, the distortion is a lot less noticeable because simply you're just having a lot more uh, things going on in the photo. You're a lot farther away from your subject. In this case, I was focusing both lenses on the green doors here. And there's not much difference between the lenses until you start looking at the outsides. And here, again, chromatic aberration. You can see a lot of it on the Canon lens, while the Rokinon tends to be pretty clean. More of that on these branches. And if I go to the other side of the photo, we can see the same thing. We can see that green and blue chromatic aberration on the Canon lens while the Rokinon is quite clean. However, the Rokinon tends to get a little blurry when it comes to the extreme corners of the photo. Things start getting blurry while the Canon, in my opinion, tends to retain a little bit more detail. That only goes for the outside extremes because when we come to this like banner and this light pole, the Rokinon seems to have a little bit of more detail in terms of the lettering on the on the banner than the Canon does. Otherwise, the center is quite clean. And vignetting, of course, Canon has less vignetting than the Rokinon does. And the exposure ratings were a little bit higher on the Canon, even though the settings were exactly the same. Again, pointing to the fact that the Canon lets in a, a tiny bit more light than the Rokinon lens does. Here we have a photo of an old church. And there's not much to go over in this picture except for the same thing that we've been seeing before. The Canon has that chromatic operation around the branches and the Rokinon has more vignetting. Another interesting thing I noticed, and you'll notice again in another photo, is that the Canon tended to have a little bit of more lens flare. And I believe, given that the sun was on the right side of the, of the uh, lens, I believe this probably was because the Rokinon's lens hood, and they're both not detachable, the lens hood sticks out a little bit more um, surrounding the lens better than it is on the Canon. Um, I could be wrong in terms of the reasoning, but this is sort of my theory as to why we got the lens flares on the Canon while the Rokinon seems to not have any lens flares. Again, when you look at distortion, uh, the Rokinon tends to have these curved lines here and here while the Canon maintains them in a straight way. More lens flare going on in the corner here. We can see this rainbow line, loss of detail on the outer edge, while the Rokinon somehow managed to save that detail. All right, so now we have some night photography of the sky. First thing I wanna do is look at the detail. Again, I think the Rokinon has a tiny bit more detail, especially when you look at the bark and stuff of the tree. There's a little bit of more detail in the bark and in the leaves. Uh, another thing we noticed that the lens flare shows up on the Canon. There was like a street light sort of out on the side of where I was taking a photo. 
and the cannon captured it while the Rokinon did not. Vignetting is a lot stronger on the Rokinon as it always has been, especially at Aperture 2.8. And another interesting thing is the distortion when it comes to these like stars here. The cannon tends to have this radial distortion going on, meaning everything that's going in a radius around the center of the photo is being stretched with that manner, while the Rokinon seems to be, well, it doesn't do that. Although on this side, while we're seeing the radial distortion here, uh, I'm seeing sort of more of a linear distortion where things are being pulled out. Like these stars here, they're being stretched out from the center to the corner. Now let's look at this corner of the image. Uh, we're seeing that the cannon, um, now it wasn't windy or anything like that. Uh, there could have been a little bit of a breeze, but I think this is mostly due to the fact that the cannon is just not quite as sharp on the edges as the Rokinon is. Go more towards the center, seeing a little bit more detail on the Rokinon than on the cannon, especially with the branches out here. However, I'm nitpicking because, well, maybe not, <laughs> because... Yeah, the cannon is a lot more blurry on the edges than the Rokinon is at Aperture 2.8. Quite interesting. So in conclusion, you know, I would say that if you are doing things like night photography, you know, really wide landscape shots, then the Rokinon is probably going to perform just as well as the Canon. However, one deal breaker would be if you completely rely on autofocus. If you do, then yes, unfortunately, the Rokinon does not have autofocusing, the Canon does. Another thing, if you're doing, you know, photography such as interior and architect, architectural photography, then you're definitely going to be quite bothered by the distortion, the massive kind of globe distortion that comes with the Rokinon, especially when you're doing really tight rooms. Um, you're going to see that bowing. Um, and somehow, miraculously, the Canon gets away with minimal distortion. Um, but for the money's worth, you know, it's, it's really hard not to praise the Rokinon. And honestly, I had my money on Canon. This is why I loaned it from them, just to see how great it is. And it is a great cam uh, lens, but um, it, it, I was pretty amazed when I saw the, when I went, went ahead and reviewed the, the photos and, and saw how much detail the Rokinon has. It's just amazing how much detail it retains in the corners and, and you know, on the outsides of the image. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I know that there's a lot to take in, especially if you're new to wide-angle lenses. Otherwise, um, hope you enjoyed it. Good, you know, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to ask questions and comment. Give me suggestions in the comment section. And I'll see you all next time.